At the time of the Louisiana Purchase, there were only a few settlements west of the Mississippi. The oldest of these frontier trade centers was Arkansas Post. Established in the summer of 1686 on the Arkansas River, almost 80 years before St. Louis, the Post was a French-Canadian colony and served as a trading and military base until the end of the colonial period. This fertile lowland was the home of the Quapaw Indians, who befriended the French, the Spanish, and finally, the Americans. The French called them the Aucansay, meaning downstream people. A lot of the Americans called the Arkansas Indians the Ozark Indians because the French called the Arkansas Post the Post Ozark. And so the name got transferred by the Americans to the Indians. And the early American uh, expedition up the Arkansas River named the mountains the Ozarks after the tribe. The Quapaw grew squash, beans, and corn, and hunted buffalo and turkey. Throughout the territory, they were known for their artistry. I like to say that they were artisans, or anthropologists, or archaeologists, we'll call them manufacturers, but they really got their subsistence by making these fabulous pots. They were known by the French for their dugout canoes. Everything they did was of a finer quality, I think, than a lot of other people that the French were dealing with. And a lot of the Indians would come in and trade with the Quapaw tribe. They had trade networks that ran all the way to New England on the one hand and down to Mexico on the other. So uh, the goods moved rather freely into this part of the world long before the white people were actually here. In 1804, just after the Louisiana Purchase, the United States government took possession of Arkansas Post. It was a melting pot, French, slaves, free blacks, and Indians. It's important to realize that uh, almost every class of person, white, black, and Indian, was represented in the social structure at Arkansas Post, even though it was a very small place, never more than a few hundred people. And in fact, uh, some of the early travelers said that the uh, French and the Indians here spoke a patois, that is a, a kind of separate and distinct language that was a mixture of French and Quapaw. So Arkansas Post stands as an example of how interracial and intercultural cooperation can occur. When Arkansas became a territory in 1819, Arkansas Post was named the capital and a young printer, William Woodruff, began publishing the Arkansas Gazette newspaper. The post was not centrally located. It was prone to flooding, and mosquitoes and malaria were a constant problem. So in 1821, the capital was moved to Little Rock, and over time, the once thriving trade post declined. In the early morning hours of December 16, 1811, Four years before the land survey, the most catastrophic earthquake in North American history shook northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, and western Tennessee. The ground split open, creating 20-foot deep cracks that ran five miles long. The banks of the Mississippi collapsed. Trees bowed over, and sand and gases poured out of the earth. It was of enormous power. Church bells rang in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. It was felt in Boston. It was felt in the uh, southernmost province of Canada. It was felt in New Orleans. The land ripped apart by the New Madrid earthquake was occupied by a few thousand Cherokee Indians. A Cherokee prophet by the name of Skakwa, which means the swan, um, was uh, very active in promoting the idea that the quake was a sign from the Great Spirit or the gods that Indians had gone wrong in trying to uh, assimilate with whites. Warned by the prophet that another quake was coming to punish white pioneers, the Cherokees moved southwest and settled in the Arkansas River Valley near the foothills of the Ozark Mountains. Here, their culture ran head-on into the Osage Indians. 
the Cherokee can't find uh, enough game and they push further to the north and to the west onto the land that the Osage still controlled. And uh, next thing you know, you've got a full-blown war going on uh, out here on the Arkansas River between two groups of people. On a cold December day in 1817, a company of the U.S. Rifle Regiment, the best soldiers in the Army, arrived in keelboats from Arkansas Post and established a fort to keep peace between the warring tribes. Fort Smith was a small log and stone stockade, hastily built on a bluff overlooking the confluence of the Arkansas and Poto Rivers. It was a lonely and isolated station, never housing more than 130 soldiers. The garrison, consisting of two blockhouses and lines of cabins or barracks for the accommodations of 70 men, is agreeably situated. The view is more commanding and picturesque than any other spot of equal elevation on the banks of the Arkansas. Thomas Nuttall, 1819. For about seven years from 1817 to 1824, the fort is established. It is successful in its mission. Uh, the unique thing about it is, with the exception of a couple of isolated incidents, uh, they don't have to shoot to, uh, to stop the fighting. This little outpost in the middle of, of nowhere stopped a war. In 1822, territorial leaders negotiated a peace treaty between the Osage and Cherokee. Two years later, the army abandoned the garrison. Some of the soldiers decided to stay and settle in the Fort Smith area on surveyed land deeded to them as veterans of the War of 1812. The same year the army left Fort Smith, the Arkansas territorial government decided the Quapaw had outlived their usefulness. The Aborigines of this territory, now commonly called the Arkansas, or Quapwas, or Ozarks, do not at this time number more than about 200 warriors. Thomas Nuttall, botanist. They were reduced in numbers, and they were the geographical irritants of the territory. Quapaw Chief Hecaton pleaded with the territorial governor to allow his people to stay in Arkansas to leave my native soil and go among red men who are alien to our race is throwing us like outcasts upon the world. Have mercy, send us not there. Hecaton, Quapaw. Hecaton's pleas were ignored and the Quapaw signed a treaty and moved to the Southwest, joining the Caddo on the Red River in Louisiana. And the Quapaws died, I think about a third of the tribe died of starvation living with the Caddo's. The lands that they were put on flooded, uh, provisions didn't come through, and a lot of the Quapaws escaped back into Pine Bluff. But the Quapaw were not welcomed back. In 1835, one year before statehood, the Auconsay Indians were removed to the northeast corner of Oklahoma, where to this day, tribal members make their home. The territory of Arkansas included the present-day states of both Oklahoma and Arkansas. In 1836, when Arkansas was admitted to the Union as the 25th state, Oklahoma was cut off, becoming Indian Territory. In 